when we talk about food and aspects of food and health, a question that always comes up is whether food is necessary and uh, the, in human beings. Are they people who survive without food as we know it, the food, the kind of foods that we know it? And it goes into a very gray and a very controversial area. And um, in particular, there are people who say they have lived and they live without consuming food. There are people who say we just derive energy from looking at the sun or gazing at the sun, etc., etc. Some people say we just live on air and we live on prana. There is a term in ancient uh, Indian texts called prana. Prana means the life force. If the life force is running through you properly, you never fall ill. The life force will keep you alive. You don't need food. Now, what is the science of this prana? Is it possible? There are people there who say they are doing this and they live on nothing. Now, where do we go to look at, to find the science of this stuff? Can we get to the science of this? Are there people who they really do this? And in India, there are people who claim this, and there are people who are alive today, who are alive, and who've been experimented on, who are willing to come out and be experimented and show that they don't drink, they don't eat, and they are still alive. And there is still one man who is there in Rajasthan, who has been examined by the defense research labs in India, and the data continues to be that he doesn't eat or he doesn't drink and he's still alive. Now, how is this possible? How can you keep a system alive without um, giving it food or uh, food as we know it? Where do we go to begin the science or to understand the science? The simplest thing is to look at plants. Plants make food and all they require is sunshine, water and carbon dioxide and they make food for themselves. They do amazing things. They synthesize um, sugars or starch during the daytime, and they convert it into night. In the nighttime, they convert it into something else, and they move it around the plant body and store it in different places. That is one example. Now, the way they do that is to use the power of the sunshine. Now, how can um, how can how can how can a human being do this? Is there some way it can achieve this? Maybe they can. Uh, the way I look at it is in terms of how they can connect with some other source of energy, either directly or indirectly. Now, let me give you one example. Uh, directly, maybe through connecting with sun. The sunshine contains so much energy. It can drive so many things as it does in plants with a little bit of water. It, um, now, if we look at the finest biology that is involved in making a small molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP for short. ATP is synthesized in all our bodies. It's the energy currency. So if the body has to work in wherever energy is required, it requires ATP, and it takes ATP, and then it breaks the last bond between the three phosphates, and it releases just the chemical energy, the energy that comes out of breaking a bond to drive reactions. And ATP is synthesized in the mitochondria. And when we look at the machine that makes ATP, you will find it is like a motor, like a dynamo. It's a large protein complex. The person who solved the structure of this protein complex, Sir John Walker, uh, he's in Cambridge, and he has uh, he was till recently the head of a unit called the Medical Research Council's M Mitochondrial Biology Unit. And he won the Nobel Prize for solving the structure of this molecule, the molecule, the molecular engine that makes ATP. Now, when you look at the molecular structure of this engine, it physically is like a motor. There is one, two parts to the motor. There is one bottom part which is fixed on the membrane and the top part that actually moves like a motor. And with one rotation of this motor, it synthesizes three molecules of ATP. Now what drives this motor is a difference in pH, the hydrogen ion concentration between different parts of a membrane where this thing sits. 
and also that is maintained by electrons being transferred across a long chain of uh, proteins and then it generates all this energy required. Is there some way to keep this thing working without putting food into the system? Maybe there is some mechanism. Maybe there is some mechanism for this to be moving and generating ATP without having to move electrons down the electron transport chain. And maybe this needs investigating. Maybe this needs studying. This might be difficult in a complex system like the human body to understand because we have so many different tissues, so many different organs. They all require food and they all have to be synchronized if this activity has to happen. If you start with a simple cell, a single cell, which is a non-eukaryote, it's a bacterial cell, and you ask, do bacteria produce and grow and multiply and make more bacteria without requiring any of the naturally considered sources of food? And you see, yes, they can. There are many bacteria that exist in the environment who live in extremely extremely high temperatures or extreme conditions that never see light, that use just pure chemistry to arrive at this process of keeping alive. There may be a connection between that and how they'll keep themselves alive and what happens in the human body. Now, it is a mystery how these individuals survive. Experiments are being done. The data is out there which shows that they don't eat or drink for many, many years or months or weeks and uh, how this happens is an open question.